In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to create this really cool Let's Play Pavilion in Revit. This is a really good exercise in massing and how to create complex shapes in an easy few steps. So first, I'm going to be showing you how to create splines, how to place them, then how we can actually modify them to get them to look exactly how we want them to look. And finally, we're going to be turning them into actual geometry, solid and plain geometry, which we're going to be then converting into building elements inside of a Revit project to complete this. Let's go! Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours of content dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit and I'm going to start off with this uh, file which I've prepared. So what you can see here is that we're in the massing environment. So this is what we see under create. Uh, to get the massing environment you need to go here to file, new and then go to conceptual mass and it's going to look like this. Here I've also added an image and also a section which gives us another image for that section view. Uh, now if you would like to get this private project file I'm going to be talking about that in the end of this video. So now let's get started. Uh, the first step is to basically mark out this spiral and to do this the best option is to go with a spline through points. So that's this tool over here. Uh, you want to make sure that you're drawing on level 1 and then also you want to make sure that the draw on work plane is selected so that's going to just keep the points down at level 1 and not going to snap to anything. So you come here and then you just start placing points and the spline is basically going to start following that shape. And you're just going to go like this all the way around until you're done. Once we're done, we're going to get something that looks like this. So we have our spiral in place. And if I go and open up the default 3D view, this is what that looks like. I can turn off the thin lines, so it's going to be a bit thicker. However, I don't want that, so let's make it like this. Okay, so now the next step is going to be to copy the spline because we want to get the top of this whole object, so this top here, and we need to create a spline that looks like this. So it's basically going to look the same in the floor plan view, however, in the section and elevation views and in the 3D view, it's obviously going to be following a different path. So what you want to do is you just want to select this. Uh, you want to make sure you have at least a couple of levels. So then when this is selected, then you want to go here to clipboard, go to copy to clipboard, paste, aligned with selected levels, and then pick out level two and click OK. So it's going to copy that spline over here. Now what you can do is you can just select individual points. So like this, you hover over the point or you can select it like that. So I'm going to select this first point and then I'm just going to move this down and I can go to the section view and just double check where that is. I'm going to place it like this. I don't want to go all the way to the bottom, so just like that. Go back to the 3D view. Okay, the second one is this one here. Select it, move it down a little bit. You can go to the section view and then align it in this case here. Now, the line isn't going to follow perfectly at first, but that's okay, just give it a, 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 give it a chance. So let's select this one now, go back to the section and then move it down to this line. And as you can see, it's now starting to kind of pick out that shape, pick up that shape. You go back to the 3D view, you select this one, you go to the section, you move it down, and now it's already starting to follow very well. Now, you're still going to get some issues just because this is a little bit up, but yeah, I think this is going to look good. This one we can move just a tad bit down and so on. So you just want to follow this process. It does take some time just because it's such a long line, but you will be able to follow all of these points and complete it. And this is what that's going to look like once it's done. As you can see, it just follows all of these lines perfectly. 
And once this is done, let's go to the 3D view. Here you can see what that looks like in the 3D view. And now we need to create some sort of uh, geometry that follows the spiral, but it cannot be a line. What I need actually is just a flat horizontal surface. So to do that, what I'll do is I'm going to pick out a point. I'm going to set it to draw on face and just pick out this line. And it's basically going to host it on that line, hit the escape key a couple of times, then I can go to set work plane and pick out this plane here on that point. And then I can create a rectangle on that point that's going to be then swept along that spiral. So let's go here to rectangle, go to set work plane, and I can go, I should be able to go with pick a plane, there we go, pick this plane here, and then make sure that the draw on work plane is selected with no 3D snapping. And we can still snap to that point, but that's okay. Hit the escape key a couple of times once it's placed. Use the tab key to highlight only one of the lines, extend it. Now let's just extend it like that. We can even make it smaller, so like this. Perfect, and now let's select that shape. Hold the control key, select this line, and then hit create form and it's going to create a spiral like that. Next, we want to select the line here on the bottom and because this is going to be modeled as a curtain wall, we need to give it a surface or a curtain system to be exact. So you just select this and go to create form and it's just going to extrude it up. Now we can select the top and extend it up a little bit more. And now what we'll do is we'll simply cut this surface with this shape here to basically split it because we only want to go up to here. So for that, you need to go here to cut geometry, cut this with this, hit the escape key a couple of times. And now, as you can see, this is one spiral and this is another one, which is perfect. We should be able to delete this one. Can I do that? Nope, oops. So it doesn't work, so I guess you can't really delete it, but that's okay. It can stay here, it's not really going to be used for geometry. So now let's open up a project. Here I have just an empty project, that's perfect. Go back here, go to load into project, and it's going to give you this error message, that's okay. You want to switch this to place on work plane and place it on level one, just like this click to place and it's there, hit the escape key a couple of times, go to the 3D view and this is what we have. So once we're here, uh, we need to apply a curtain system and a roof to complete this. So what you wanna do for that is you want to go here to masking and sight, go to curtain system and then let's select this surface here, click create curtain system, that's going to look like that. And now if you want to create the top, we can do that as a roof on the bottom of this shape. So let's now click create system. Okay, that's okay. Hit the escape key a couple of times, go to roof. I'm going to be using this really small roof and just pick out the bottom of this shape. So just like that, and then create roof. And there we go. So now if I go to massing inside and turn off show mass, it's going to look like this. If we then go to realistic, yeah, perfect. It's going to look like that. Now, of course, you can go back to the mass itself and then you can make this shape a bit smaller if you want. So it doesn't create such a large roof here. But overall, I think this looks really, really good. As you can see, when we turn on the shadows, yeah, it does look amazing. And then, of course, you can play around with the mullions, apply some wood material, make them round, so on and so forth. So if you want, you can do that. And it's going to give you a really good result. Uh, but this is the basic approach, how you would create this really complex shape in Revit quite easily. Now, if you want to get access to this Revit project file, both the beginning file and this final file, so you can try it out for yourself, you can find all of my Revit project files on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link up in the cards above, and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.